this afternoon we're here at the Melrose Credit Union and we're taking a look at the collection of bears that is um, on loan, I guess you would say, from uh, Jim Fu. And Jim is going to give us a little bit of um, background on the bears and describe some of them. And first of all, Jim, do you know how many bears you have on display here today? I, I think I brought down about a hundred or so. I have, I brought about half of them. And I brought down, I tried to bring a cross section of of the things that I have, plus I brought all, almost all the older bears that I have. And the ones that I thought that would be most interesting to people who are maybe not familiar with, uh, well, we're all familiar with teddy bears, but maybe not familiar to teddy bear collecting. So I wanted to make sure that we had something for everybody. I guess everybody's familiar with the uh, way that the teddy bear got its name, and if I'm correct, it was from Theodore Roosevelt, they are yeah, named all, after that. There are all sorts of stories floating around the one that seems to be the most uh, accepted is he uh, was on a bear hunt with a bunch of friends and they were not successful at all. And so he, some, while he was taking a break or whatever, some friends captured a very sickly bear and tied it to a tree and wanted him to come and shoot the bear. And of course he wouldn't do it. It was an unsportsmanlike act and so on. And so uh, the next day or within a week or so after that, uh, Washington cartoonist picked up on the story and, and put a cartoon in, in the paper there and that went across the nation and uh, so the story became uh, known nationwide and right at that time the people who were who eventually founded the ideal toy company were just making some little stuffed bears and they thought it might be real nice if they would call it, could call them teddy bears so they got a hold of the president and he said it would be fine and that's supposedly how it all started. It's how they got the name Teddy Bears anyway. Well, I guess you could have a worse namesake if you, right. if you thought about it. Uh, Jim, how did you get into collecting the bears? Well, I guess, I don't know. I just, uh, Teddy Bears have always been something kind of special to me. I guess they're, they're special to everybody. We all had one when we were little. It's a, it's a kind of a way to hang on to your youth a little bit, I think. And uh, I've, I've really never seen a bear that I haven't really liked a whole lot. And I just started collecting, and then when I you know, got to know more about it and realized that they were a collectible item, and started seeing some of the really old bears and realizing that they were available, uh, I just couldn't stop. I had to just keep collecting. So it's like anything else. Once you start collecting and get interested and, and uh, get involved with it, it's, it becomes a passion, and you just stay with it and enjoy it the best you can, I guess. Well, then you weren't at all surprised by the recent bear craze that swept the the country of the world, I guess, actually. No, actually, it's bears have been uh, been around since 1903, so I think there's always been a bear craze. It's just a matter of publicity, I guess. Um, Plus, a lot of people are using bears as a promotional item. For example, the, uh, the Dayton's bears over here, uh, Started in they started in 19 oh, excuse me 1985 uh, Dayton's uh, company and they're using them as a promotion and now you get a lot of uh, a lot of companies are using teddy bears and every year they come out with a different bear and uh, as a promotional item and so I think that helps too to uh, promote just bear collecting in general. Probably. Well, it looks like you have all of the Dayton's uh, uh, Santa bear. Uh, the first one is the one on the right, the left. I mean. The first one right over here is uh, the one on the end on here, over here on the left is from 1985. And actually, the first one I did get was the 1986 bear. And then when I got into collecting, I wished I had had the 1985, and so I advertised around and found the lady in Painesville had one that she was willing to sell. Oh. So I was able to get that. And so this is the most recent one over here. This one just came out this year, the one with the, the little red hooded jacket on and so on. You can see the bears are all very similar. They, they haven't changed much at all from the first year. It's just they changed the clothing and the story yeah. that goes with them. Yes, yeah. right. Okay, well maybe we should um, start over here at the end and you can uh, perhaps point out some of the more interesting ones and um, maybe uh, okay. we're, looks as if Bill is looking right under the tree here. Okay, somewhere. why don't we start right under the tree? I have a lot of uh, just mini bears under there, and a lot of people who don't have maybe have quite as much space, we happen to have a nice big room at home in the basement where I'm able to keep these characters uh, most of the year. But a lot of people just collect mini bears, and these are all relatively new. 
but I've seen uh, several mini bears in shops, even such as the uh, size of this little character here for, uh, you know, valued up to between anywhere between three and six hundred dollars, depending upon their age and condition and so on. So mini bears have, have also been around a long time. Most of these are fully jointed and uh, are relatively inexpensive. And so if you want to get into bear collecting and don't have a whole lot of room, sometimes uh, you might want to consider the mini bears. I consider anything, I guess, about six inches on down being a mini bear. Mini bear. Yeah. I was going to ask you how it, uh, you know, what qualifies as a mini bear. Rather fascinated by the uh, sporty little roaster that you were in. Is that a, uh, a lot of the things that I brought in and had the bears in and around and dressed in and so on are are things from my childhood. The old truck and the old uh, car there were uh, the items that my brother and I played with a lot when we were kids and they work out real well right now for the bears. Uh, yeah. It's a cute car. It looks like a pretty sturdy little number too. Yeah, the wheels turn, the steering wheel turns and the front wheel turns. We spent many hours playing with that. I, <laughs> I imagine it's pretty um, valuable to you as well as perhaps the bears that are in it. Yeah. Okay, then um, this fellow looks um, like he might have been around a while. This guy is, uh, it's hard to say exactly when bear comes from unless you know the person that uh, got it when they or had it when they were young and know exactly when they got it. The reason I bought this bear in very nice condition, he's from the early 1950s, maybe even late 40s, but he's exactly like the bear I had when I was uh, very young. I, that bear we'll see a little bit later on now. And you can see the two are almost exactly the same. Plus he was such a deal, I just couldn't pass him up. <laughs> well, you can't pass a good deal any time yeah. like that. Yeah, how about the animated bear here in front with the candle? Okay, that's not my bear. That belongs to Simon, and he picked that up and just put it in with this display the day after we set it oh, up. Okay. Uh, I came back to see how these guys were behaving themselves, and, and <laughs> this guy was here, so that belongs to the credit union. It's a very nice bear. It's a very nice bear. How about the, the little one down there? That's a nice bear. Yeah, that bear I got for my daughter for a Christmas present just last year. He's, he, she bought him in uh, South Dakota, and he's just a real nice little bear. Uh, Bear. His name is Adams. All of these bears have these little grizzly bears. We call them Adams. They all have, almost all have names. The names are based upon either their appearance or maybe who I got them from or where they came from. Basically, is, is how they're named. Uh, some of them are named by the companies that make them. Um, another interesting bear. You can see the little brown, <coughs> excuse me, the little brown bear, the Misha bear. That's a commemorative bear from the 1980 Olympics. The originals, if you had one of those that was made in Russia, uh, it would really be a collector's item. But even this one, this is the American version, and it's getting to be very difficult to find, especially um, with the belt on. Most of the time the belt is broken off. I have three of these, and this is the only one that has the, the belt on. So uh, that's a very interesting bear. And the one next to it is, is from exactly 1948. That my mother bought that at a garage sale up in Little Falls. It's got a bell inside of it and belonged to a guy up there who lived not too far down the street from where I did when I was a kid. When you talk about collecting, are there catalogs or do you keep in contact with other collectors or how do you keep on top of the bear market? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the bear market. Huh? Okay, yeah, there are a lot of uh, catalogs and uh, uh, things out that each year come out with a new uh, series of catalogs and there's several people to put them out and uh, with the values of bears and showing other people's collections and so on. And you also learn about bears by talking with uh, antique dealers who specialize in this type of thing and other bear collectors and uh, it's like anything else, the more you, that's half the fun of it all, is going around and uh, uh, trying to find these things and looking for them and talking to people about them and, and that's basically how you learn how you learn anything, I guess. Just get into it and get going. I suppose you receive bears occasionally as gifts, or if um, your family knows you like a particular one, they'll look for it for you, or friends will. That's, that's one nice thing about a collection of any kind, is uh, if someone needs to, uh, the occasion arises, you need a gift for someone, find out what they collect, and uh, go, go out and get them one. <laughs> so yeah, I do receive a lot of bears as gifts, and uh, Every now and then someone will give me a really old bear, maybe a bear that's been in their family a while and they just don't want it around anymore. 
And uh, those seem to be really special because you know where they came from and you know a little bit of the history of the bear. And uh, those are the ones that I, I guess I especially feel uh, close to, I guess. Um, the two little ones with hats on, are, are they significant? Over here on the chair, yeah, they were they were gifts from Carol and Jerry Priatel, actually. The one was given to my wife for her birthday, and the other one was given to me for my birthday. And uh, they're little good bears. Uh, they're very new, they're from 1987. But they're really, they're special because they're from some special friends. And uh, they're just some really cute little bears. A little black and brown and cute too. Yeah, that was my, one of my daughter's bears when she was little. And, I'm taking good care of that one brother. Okay, well, you don't have to keep them caged at least. They're quite quite well behaved and uh, not the, too... The great big bear over here was uh, a bear that was... My wife made that for me for Christmas a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's kind of special also. Well, I, I should say. You take, you take him to basketball games once in a while. You, know? <laughs> you have to buy him a ticket? Not yet, no. no, no. Hold him on your lap. He has a permanent pass. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's see what else is. Smokey the bear, I recognize that. These bears are always, uh, these bears are very collectible because of the smoky situation and so on. And the versions here are from, from the 1950s. Uh, the oldest one down here, you can see this guy's pretty well worn. And he's pretty tired, he's just kind of laying down there. It, but uh, you don't see too many of this guy right here. This version is much more popular and uh, a lot of people who were, who were three, four, five years old in the late 50s, early 60s had that bear. To find them, to still find them with a hat is very difficult. Uh, the hat is, is just on with a little uh, rubber band and so that gets lost and broken. And the badges and the belts and so on are things that break off. So this guy's in really good shape for being 25 or 30 years old. The one with the rubber face, that's the only one of these I've ever seen. They're, they're in catalogs and all, but you just don't see them in the shops or shows too often, so I was real happy to find them out there. Well, it's just a little collection of smokies. Well, oh, that, yeah, they're cute too. And then we have a corduroy bear. Uh, yeah, that's the, this is the, actually, I have it here on a card that it's the first bear that my wife has made, but she's since then told me it's the second bear. So <laughs> I really should change that card. But uh, he's named after our dog, and because it was one of the first bears that she made, it's a very special bear. He's fully jointed, and, and he's made from a pattern uh, from, it was taken from a bear that was made perhaps back in the 20s and so on. Okay. This guy is one of the more special bears in my collection because he and I have been friends for about 41 years. <laughs> Um, he's wearing one of my old softball hats, and but that's the bear that I got when I was a year old. And, you, and we talked about the one down at the other end, how similar they are. Uh, that one, whoever owned that bear, probably didn't uh, get along with him or play with him or love him as much as I loved this bear when I was a kid, because this one is really warm. His eyes have been replaced. Uh, I don't even remember when and so on, but uh, that bear is very special. And, uh, kind of made a little family out of those. That, the, 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 the lady bear is the same uh, vintage. Yep, exactly the same. I found, found that one in a shop over in Halleck a few years ago and so on. Um, I just call this guy Old Bear, and so that's Old Bear's wife. <laughs> they get along very well. Oh. Very companionable there. They got two up on top there on the little stools, but like they might be uh, newer. They are there. I just got those last year. Those were uh, City of Alexandria, I believe it was their chain of commerce, used those as a promotional bear last year at Christmas time over there. And, uh, we were over there shopping right after Christmas and there's still some of these around and they're really a neat looking bear. And so we named Ole and Lena. And <laughs> what else? Yeah, what else? So. The little black one here now, Jim, he looks pretty old. That, uh, yeah, he's from the 1940s and uh, I'm sure he's from the 40s, but I don't know exactly when he came from. People up in Little Falls uh, had him, and he's a he's an all fours bear. Actually, he, he could be standing down, but I have him sitting up there so he can look around a little better and see the sights a little bit better. But he's a very nice little bear. He's in nice shape for, for being uh, 
when he's 45 years old, probably. Mm -hmm. I like the yogis. That's kind of a... Yeah, there, there are two yeah. characters here that really aren't bears. And uh, the yogi bear is uh, missing his hat. But since then, in catalogs and so on, I found out that uh, he comes with the with the uh, Huckleberry Hound character over here. And then at a, at a flea market down the cities last summer and found uh, Oggy Doggy over here. And they're all the same vintage. And so they're kind of a little family right there. Uh, in the catalog, these two, in the catalog that I have at home, these two are valued as a pair. Just to give you an idea of catalog prices and how sometimes they're a little bit crazy. These two as a pair are valued at $85 in the catalog, and that would be Yogi really should have his hat and so on. But uh, I found Yogi a couple of years ago at a little shop over in Osakis and paid uh, a whole $4 for them. I remember coming home and, and talking about how I spent $4 on this beer and how the pier are worth 85 and my daughter quickly pointed out that uh, the Huckleberry Hound must be worth $81. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cute. And um, let's see, we're on to... We're getting over here now to the area where uh, we have some of the older bears. Um, when we take a look at the character up there on the chair, that bear is it's from the 1950s, so he's not really old, but he's a pin-jointed bear, both arms. If you move one arm, the other arm goes along with it. Uh, the head is not jointed, and uh, that's a, a style that was used. Uh, Japanese used that style a lot in the 1940s to make some of their bears and so on. And, some of the other companies picked up on that. He's wearing uh, my grandmother's glasses, and so he's taking care, good care of those for me, and he seems to feel a little bit better with those. So. Um, this is an interesting old bear down here. Rita Anakin teaches uh, with me over at junior high, and she knows I collect old bears, and they were going through their house cleaning some things up, and she found the old guy there. And so he's from the 1930s, she, she and her sister played with that uh, bear when they were kids and so I'm kind of babysitting that bear for when people when people give me old bears of this kind um, I you know I look at it like I'm just kind of a uh, caretaker for that bear for a while and if I ever do sell this collection and it does you know there are some bears that do have some monetary value um, I would never sell a bear that someone gave to me I would see to it that you know, I would say hey I'm getting rid of these bears this one belonged to your mother or your grandmother or something, and I would like you to have it. Uh, Jim, and just a question: When you get a bear that's, an, <coughs> excuse me, an older bear, is there anything that you do to uh, do you shampoo them or clean them or do any kind of thing like that? Believe it or not, there's when I go to uh, bear shows, there are little bottles labeled right from the factory bear shampoo, and <laughs> it's it's just the soap like anything else, but. The very best thing to do with them, and you can you know brush them a little bit and maybe vacuum them a little bit, but you really don't want to put water on them and scrub them up and so on. You know, as soon as you do that, they you can just tell they've been scrubbed. Sure. You know, it's just not really good for them. So. And I suppose you don't always really know what the fiber content or what you, what you can really do with that. Uh. You know, plus, you know, some of them, you know, they're so brittle and, and they, they, they just couldn't take that kind of a kind of treatment at all. Okay, maybe then if you want to tell us a little something about, uh, well, where would you like to go next? I'll, What's your I'll next logical this step? Little, uh, this little blue bear here with the red swimsuit on is uh, a very special bear to me. And again, it's, it really has no value. In a shop somewhere, it would probably sell for 10 bucks or whatever. But when I was six years old, I went to the uh, Morrison County Fair and I remember my dad or somebody went down a dime and I threw three darts and I didn't know what was going on, but I broke three balloons. I'm lucky I didn't kill anybody, I guess. And so I won this bear. I was able to pick out a bear. And then I took it home and I already had my bear over there. So um, my little brother was, I, I don't think he was even a year old. And so of course I gave him this bear and he had it uh, all through his childhood and so on. And we were going through some old trunks up in the falls about three years ago and we came across this guy laying in there. And, my brother really didn't know what to do with it, and I said, well, Don, don't, you know, don't ever throw that bear away. I said, if you're ever going to, you know, want to get rid of it, I will gladly take good care of it for you. And so, following Christmas, uh, there was a, an old box under the tree wrapped in newspaper, and uh, he uh, gave me his bear. 
and so uh, he, he reserves visitation rights, of course, any time, but uh, that's a very special bear because it's just been around in the family for quite a while. And it came back to you after yeah, you were yeah. kind of giving it away. Yeah. Um, maybe before we take a look at the really old one, this, this bear right here, well, this bear down here with the helmet on, I used to be an explorer scout, and so he's wearing, he's wearing my helmet here. But, uh, this was my daughter's first bear when she was um, very young, and she gave it to me for my collection just a year or so ago. Uh, the little guy up here at the top, I have a 54 Pontiac that used to belong to my dad, and uh, we completely restored that a couple years ago and had to replace the headliner. So this bear is made from the headliner of that old car. And, uh, so he's pretty special because of that. Um, the rest of these guys are just nice old bears, and uh, they're all special in their own little way. Excuse me, but are these copied after the, um, now I can't think of the fellow that... Uh, the Muppet, yeah. Muppet. Yeah, that's Fozzie, Fozzie bear. Uh, this, one, this one, McDonald's put this out uh, um, two years ago, maybe, and maybe even last year as a promotional thing, and this little guy is, I'm sure, from the 1980s also. Fozzie is a pretty popular guy. So. Sure, yeah, it's cute. Some of, you know, some of the bears, such as the Fozzie bear and some of the others, really are not teddy bears, but they're related, and so you've got to mm -hmm. keep up on those things, too. Uh, in the showcase, then, are the really old bears, and these are the things that I've really gotten into in the last about two years or so. Um, I find these old guys really, really fascinating uh, for all sorts of reasons. I guess they've just been around for a long time and they've been uh, the recipient of a lot of love and care and attention and just to, just to exist, just for a piece of material stuff with straw to exist for 60 years and still be intact is, is kind of special in itself. Uh, some of the bears in there are, are pretty valuable um, shop-wise. They range in price from uh, oh, anywhere from $50 up to about $400. And in the catalogs, they're worth uh, quite a bit more. And each year, they increase in value quite a bit. Uh, the most expensive bear, I guess, that I have is the great big guy down here in the corner. He's uh, found him in a shop over in Wisconsin. We went on a trip over the Bar County area last year. And uh, he was just in such nice condition. and so big, you just don't find them that big in very often. And uh, he was a pretty expensive bear, but I uh, just had to bring him home. <laughs> um, in catalogs and so on, he's, he's described as being a very difficult bear to find. I think he originally came from way out east somewhere. How he wound up in Wisconsin, I don't know. Uh, so I don't know the exact date really that any of these bears were made. Uh, the tags are long since gone, if there were even tags on them. A lot of them had little ear clips. The company made them put little ear clips on them and so on, and they're worn away. So you have to go by their appearance and their stitching, uh, with their facial expression and the types of material used and so on, and it's, it's an educated guess to, to come up with their, uh, as to how old they are. And what did you guess that bear was? Uh, that one has to be from right around 1920 maybe five years or so on either side of 1920 hours. You were pointing one out to me before that you thought was about a 1910 bear? 1917 is the oldest bear that I have. That's the the, bear, the large bear sitting in the corner in the middle shelf. Um, I found him in a little shop up in Two Harbors, and the lady who sold him to the shop owner uh, recalls giving that bear when she was a year old. And so we were able to date that one then right to 1917. And, and most of the time with the older bears, that's the only way you can really get an exact date is to know exactly who owned them and when they got them and so on. There's the, the large bear in the corner down here that we talked about first is an American bear. You can tell by the, the style, the way they're made, the, the way the face is shaped and so on. There's a few German bears in there also. And uh, it's very interesting, at least to me, the, realized that uh, the first teddy bears were made in the United States in 1903, and the first teddy bears were made in Germany in 1903 also. They weren't called teddy bears over there, of course, but uh, they kind of evolved together right at the same time. Uh, and 
so the you know the similarities are it's amazing to think that they were both you know being made in both countries and uh, at the same time and looking very much the same and joining the same and, and so on the little guy sitting on the horse there is a german bear from right about 1930 and uh, he's been repaired a little bit his his uh, pads and, and paws have been replaced and he has new eyes and so on but whoever redid that uh, did that repair work did just a really nice job on that thing. Now that's a little wheeled horse he's sitting on. Is that a, an, an antique horse or antique toy? Or? That, that horse is probably to me the most special thing in this whole collection. Uh, when my dad was growing up the family was not real well off and so that was my dad's uh, prized possession when he was a little boy. And that was uh, stored in a trunk at home also for years and years. And I remember when I was a little kid, once every two or three years, we'd open up these trunks and go through them. I remember seeing that horse and what a special thing it was. And my mother gave it to me. My dad passed away in 1971. And my mother gave me that horse about five years ago. And uh, the bear is taking very good care of it. Now. It's a beautiful horse. It's really a beautiful toy. And I don't think my dad really played with it a whole lot. I think he just kind of sat and looked at it. Plus, he was the type of guy that really took care of things anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, I, this certainly is a, a varied collection of bears, Jim. If, if someone, say somebody just had a start on a bear collection, what, what would you suggest for them to do to, if they wanted to start collecting? What would be their first step? Well, build a great big room in their house. <laughs> <laughs> we're fortunate that we have a, a large room in our basement that we're we hope to someday uh, make into a, a recreation type room. So I have room for these characters. I have another, I have this many again at home. And uh, most of them are out, you know, and on display and in the basement. We do have some of the, some of the older bears. I have a special showcase at home in the living room for them. And uh, we have others sitting around the house in various places and so on. Little watch bears. And and but uh, to start a collection, I guess you got to just go with what you like in terms of you know, if you want to get into the really old bears, you've got to realize you've got to look around a lot and you have to spend quite a bit of money on those old guys. Um, if you like the newer bears, if you want to uh, stick with a certain theme, uh, mechanical bears or a certain size bear or certain colors and uh, certain companies, uh, there's any number of ways to go. I guess I just, I just look at a bear and if I like it, it comes home. And if I like him a lot, he comes home because I've never really seen a bear that I didn't, didn't like. <laughs> it gets to be a problem. When well, you're it's, it's amazing. A lot of these bears, you know, I'd see them in a shop somewhere. And I, don't, I don't buy new bears real often unless they, there's something really special about them. Or, you know, I get them as gifts, perhaps, sometimes. But a lot of these bears, I'll see them in a shop, and it's, you know, I really don't need that bear. I mean, it's a beautiful bear. I really don't need that bear. So then I'll go home, and I'll think, I really should have that bear. That bear should be here. And so I'll call back, and negotiate through the mails or over the telephone or I'll drive back to the shop or whatever. And a lot of these bears, I don't know, why don't just get them first time there and be finished with it? But uh, a lot of these guys have gone back and seen them in the shop the second or third time and then it's just, hey, you've got to come home. You know, somebody's got to take care of this bear. And, uh, they don't eat much though, right? Not too bad, no. They really don't. Unless they sneak around when we're not home. I don't think they eat much. <laughs> well, Jim, thank you for taking the time to explain this all to us. It's a lovely collection. And um, I think many people don't realize, perhaps, that they have a, a potential collection on their hands if they have something they like or have kept over the years. I talk to a lot of kids at school, too, and where um, a lot of kids are, well, I have some bears, you know, they'll say, I have 10 bears, I have 12 bears, and they don't realize that that's already, they've started collecting without realizing it. And the bears that they have, even though they may be new right now, um, as time goes on, they become more and more special, and they become more valuable. Um, I held a bear in my hand. I wish I could have afforded it. Uh, it was a 1908 German bear. It still had the clip in its ear. It was in really nice condition. And this was last summer, and the price taken that bear was $1,295. Um, I'm sure if you maybe flip the thousand dollar bill out there, the guy may have taken it. But I'm sure that bear even now, just you know, less than a year later, is has probably doubled. There was a bear in uh, in London. I don't know 
there had to have been something really special about it. It was from 1920. Uh, they just recently sold at auction for $85,000. And I don't know the story behind it, but that's, that's the world record so far. So if any of you guys sitting here would like to be with $85,000, find with me, that would be okay. <laughs> just keep sitting there. Well, that's great. And um, I'm, I'm, I know that a number of people have, well, Many, many people in the office have been in to see this collection, and we're very happy to have uh, a tape of it to show our well, viewers on television. And I, I really appreciate the credit union, you know, making this space available. It's just really fun to put them in here, and, and uh, I love talking about old bears, and since they've been in here, a lot of people have seen them, and I uh, want to come and talk to this strange guy that collects these old bears, and that's been fun talking about Has them. anybody ever told you they were married to an old bear that you could collect if you really wanted to? Yeah, but see, those kind... I know those kind do eat something, Same see, more. and so <laughs> I don't know if I have room for those at all. Okay, well, thanks so much, Jim, and um, good luck with your bear collection. And if you uh, would like to uh, explain anything more in detail, you can uh, perhaps see it somewhere. Sure. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. Yes, you too.